Bathing and hygiene. Bathing and hygiene are essential aspects of providing care to patients as a certified nursing assistant. This chapter will cover the importance of maintaining proper hygiene, the different bathing techniques, and the necessary steps to ensure the comfort and safety of patients during the bathing process. Importance of maintaining proper hygiene is crucial for the overall well-being and health of patients. Bathing not only helps to keep the skin clean, but also promotes circulation, removes dead skin cells, and prevents infections. It also provides an opportunity for nursing assistants to assess the patient's skin condition and identify any abnormalities or changes that may require further attention. Regular bathing and hygiene practices also contribute to the patient's emotional and psychological well-being. It helps them feel refreshed, comfortable, and confident, which can positively impact their self-esteem and overall mood. Additionally, bathing provides an opportunity for nursing assistants to establish a therapeutic relationship with patients, promoting trust and rapport. Types of baths. There are several types of baths that nursing assistants may need to assist patients with, depending on their specific needs and abilities. These include bed bath. A bed bath is performed when a patient is unable to get out of bed. It involves using a basin of water, soap, and washcloths to clean the patient's body while they remain in a supine position. Nursing assistants should ensure that the water temperature is comfortable and maintain the patient's privacy and dignity throughout the process. Shower. A shower is a more convenient bathing option for patients who are able to stand or sit in a shower chair. Nursing assistants should assist patients in getting in and out of the shower safely, ensuring that the water temperature is appropriate and providing any necessary support during the bathing process. Tub bath. A tub bath involves immersing the patient's body in a bathtub filled with water. This type of bath may be suitable for patients who are able to sit and maintain their balance. Nursing assistants should ensure the water temperature is comfortable and assist patients in getting in and out of the tub safely. Steps for bathing and hygiene. When assisting patients with bathing and hygiene, nursing assistants should follow a systematic approach to ensure thoroughness and maintain the patient's comfort and safety. The following steps can serve as a guide to prepare the environment. Before beginning the bathing process, CNAs should gather all necessary supplies, such as soap, washcloths, towels, and any specialized equipment required. They should also ensure the room is warm and free from drafts, as well as maintain the patient's privacy by closing curtains or doors. Obtain consent and explain the process. CNAs should always obtain the patient's consent before proceeding with the bathing process. They should explain each step of the process, ensuring the patient understands what will happen and addressing any concerns or questions they may have. Assist with undressing. CNA should assist patients with undressing, ensuring they are comfortable and maintaining their privacy. They should also be mindful of any physical limitations or mobility issues the patient may have and provide appropriate support. Perform the bathing technique depending on the type of bath being performed. CNA should use the appropriate technique to clean the patient's body. This may involve using a washcloth, sponge, or specialized bathing wipes. CNA should pay particular attention to areas prone to sweat, odor, or infection, such as the underarms, groin, and feet rinse and dry. After cleaning the patient's body, CNA should rinse off any soap or cleanser thoroughly. They should then pat the patient's skin dry gently paying attention to skin folds and areas prone to moisture, such as the armpits and groin. Assist with dressing. Once the bathing process is complete, CNA should assist patients with dressing, ensuring they are comfortable and appropriately dressed for the weather and their activities. They should also consider any specific clothing preferences or cultural considerations. Clean and organize. After assisting the patient with bathing and dressing, CNA should clean and organize the bathing area, disposing of any used supplies appropriately and ensuring the room is left clean and tidy. Safety considerations. When assisting patients with bathing and hygiene, CNAs should prioritize their safety and take necessary precautions to prevent accidents or injuries. Some important safety considerations include ensuring the water temperature is comfortable and not too hot or cold. 
using non-slip mats or grab bars in the shower or tub to prevent falls, assisting patients with mobility or balance issues to prevent slips or falls, using gentle and appropriate techniques to avoid causing discomfort or skin irritation, being mindful of any signs of distress or discomfort during the bathing process and adjusting accordingly. By following these steps and safety considerations, CNAs can provide effective and compassionate care to patients during the bathing and hygiene. Please proceed to the next video, dressing and grooming. Dressing and grooming are essential aspects of providing care to patients as a certified nursing assistant. This chapter will cover the skills and techniques required to assist patients with dressing and grooming tasks. As a CNA, you will often be responsible for helping patients maintain their personal hygiene and appearance, which can greatly contribute to their overall well-being and self-esteem. Dressing techniques. When assisting patients with dressing, it is important to prioritize their comfort and dignity. Here are some key techniques to keep in mind. One, provide privacy. Always ensure that the patient's privacy is respected during the dressing process. Close curtains or doors and use appropriate draping techniques to maintain their modesty. Two, communicate and involve the patient. Before starting the dressing process, communicate with the patient and involve them in decision making as much as possible. Ask for their preferences regarding clothing choices and encourage their participation in the dressing process. Three, adapt to individual needs. Each patient may have unique physical limitations or preferences when it comes to dressing. Take the time to understand their specific needs and adapt your approach accordingly. For example, some patients may require assistance with fastening buttons or zippers, while others may prefer loose-fitting clothing for ease of movement. Four, ensure safety. Always prioritize the safety of the patient during the dressing process. Be mindful of any medical devices or equipment they may be using, such as IV lines or catheters, and take appropriate precautions to avoid dislodging or damaging them. Five, maintain hygiene. During the dressing process, ensure that both you and the patient practice proper hand hygiene. This will help prevent the spread of infection and maintain a clean environment. Grooming techniques. Grooming involves assisting patients with maintaining their personal appearance, including activities such as hair care, oral hygiene, and nail care. Here are some important considerations when providing grooming assistance. One, hair care. Proper hair care is essential for maintaining cleanliness and preventing skin infections. Assist patients with brushing or combing their hair, and if necessary, help them wash and dry their hair. Be gentle and mindful of any discomfort or pain the patient may experience. Two, oral hygiene. Assisting patients with oral hygiene is crucial for maintaining their dental health and preventing oral infections. Help patients brush their teeth using a soft bristled toothbrush and toothpaste. If the patient is unable to brush their teeth independently, you may need to provide assistance or use alternative methods such as three, nail care. Proper nail care is important for preventing infections and maintaining overall hygiene. Assist patients with filing their nails, ensuring that they are smooth and not jagged. Be cautious and avoid clipping the nails, as this can cause discomfort or injury. Nursing assistants can file nails but should not clip them. Four, skin care. As a CNA, you will also be responsible for assisting patients with maintaining healthy skin. This includes regular bathing moisturizing, and addressing any skin conditions or irritations. Be observant and report any changes in the patient's skin condition to the appropriate healthcare professionals. Five, assist with shaving. For patients who require assistance with shaving, ensure that you use proper techniques and equipment to minimize the risk of cuts or irritation. Use an electric razor whenever possible to avoid injuring the resident. If an electric shaver is not available, Use a clean razor and apply shaving cream or gel to provide a smooth and comfortable shaving experience. Conclusion. Dressing and grooming are essential aspects of providing care to patients as a CNA. By following the techniques and considerations outlined in this chapter, you will be able to assist patients with maintaining their personal hygiene and appearance in a respectful and dignified manner.
Remember to prioritize the comfort and safety of the patient throughout the dressing and grooming process. Please proceed to the next video, Toileting and Incontinence Care. Toileting and incontinence, understanding toileting needs. Before providing toileting assistance, it is crucial to understand the individual needs of each patient. Some patients may require assistance with every aspect of toileting, while others may only need minimal support. Factors such as age, mobility, and cognitive abilities will influence the level of assistance required. When assisting patients with toileting, it is important to respect their privacy and dignity. Always knock on the door before entering the bathroom and ensure that the patient is comfortable with your presence. Maintain open communication with the patient throughout the process and provide reassurance and support as needed. Assisting with toileting, to assist patients with toileting, follow these steps. Prepare the environment. Ensure that the bathroom is clean, well lit, and free from any hazards. Make sure that the necessary supplies, such as toilet paper, wipes, soap, and or hand sanitizer are readily available. Assist with clothing. Help the patient to undress as needed. If the patient is unable to do so independently, provide gentle assistance while respecting their privacy. Transfer to the toilet. If the patient is able to walk, assist them in transferring to the toilet. Use proper body mechanics and assistive devices, such as a gait belt, if necessary. If the patient is unable to walk, consider using a bedpan, bedside commode, or a wheelchair to provide support. Once the patient is seated on the toilet, ensure their safety and comfort. If necessary, Use grab bars or other assistive devices to provide stability. Stay nearby to offer assistance and support as needed. Maintain hygiene. After the patient has finished toileting, assist them with cleaning themselves. Provide toilet paper or wipes as necessary. If the patient requires assistance with cleaning, use gentle and thorough techniques to ensure proper assist with clothing. Help the patient to dress after toileting. Ensure that their clothing is clean and properly fastened. If the patient requires assistance with personal hygiene, such as washing their hands, provide the necessary support. Managing incontinence. Incontinence is a common issue among patients in healthcare settings, particularly among older adults. As a CNA, you will play a vital role in managing and addressing incontinence. Here are some important considerations. Assess the situation. Determine the type and severity of the patient's incontinence. This will help you develop an appropriate care plan and select the necessary supplies, such as adult diapers or absorbent pads. Provide regular toileting opportunities. Encourage patients to use the toilet at regular intervals to minimize the risk of accidents. Establish a toileting schedule based on the patient's assist with hygiene. If a patient experiences an episode of incontinence, it is essential to provide prompt and thorough hygiene care. Clean the patient's skin gently and apply any necessary creams or ointments to prevent irritation or infection. Maintain skin integrity. Incontinence can increase the risk of skin breakdown and pressure ulcers. Ensure that the patient's skin is kept clean and dry. Use barrier creams or ointments to protect the skin from moisture and friction. Promote continence training. Work with the healthcare team to develop a continence training program for patients who are capable of regaining control over their bladder or bowel function. This may involve exercises, dietary modifications, and behavioral interventions. Provide emotional support. Incontinence can be embarrassing and distressing for patients. Offer empathy, understanding, and reassurance to help alleviate any emotional distress they may be experiencing. Please proceed to the next video, feeding and nutrition. Feeding and nutrition are essential aspects of providing care to patients as a certified nursing assistant. Proper nutrition plays a vital role in maintaining the overall health and well-being of individuals, especially those who may have difficulty feeding themselves or have specific dietary needs. In this section, we will explore the importance of feeding and nutrition in the context of CNA practice and provide guidance on how to assist patients with understanding nutritional needs. Before we delve into the specifics of feeding and nutrition, 
It is crucial to understand the basic principles of nutritional needs. Each individual has unique dietary requirements based on factors such as age, medical conditions, and personal preferences. As a CNA, it is essential to be aware of these factors and provide appropriate assistance to meet the nutritional needs of each patient's basic nutrients. The human body requires a variety of nutrients to function optimally. These nutrients include carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, and water. Carbohydrates provide energy, proteins aid in tissue repair and growth, fats provide insulation and energy storage, vitamins and minerals support various bodily functions, and water is essential for hydration and overall well-being. Special dietary considerations. Certain medical conditions and dietary restrictions may require modifications to a patient's diet. For example, individuals with diabetes may need to monitor their carbohydrate intake, while those with kidney disease may require a low-protein diet. It is crucial for CNAs to be aware of these special dietary considerations and work closely with the healthcare team to ensure patients receive appropriate nutrition. Assisting with feeding. As a CNA, you may be responsible for assisting patients with their meals. This task requires patience, empathy, and attention to detail. Here are some guidelines to follow when assisting with feeding. Preparing for meal time. Before meal time, Ensure that the patient is comfortable and ready to eat. Wash your hands thoroughly and gather all necessary utensils and equipment. If the patient requires assistance with positioning, make sure to provide the necessary support to ensure they can eat safely and comfortably, promoting independence. Whenever possible, encourage patients to feed themselves. This promotes independence and maintains their dignity. Offer assistance only when necessary such as cutting food into manageable pieces or opening containers, monitoring intake. Observe and document the patient's food intake during meals. Note any changes in appetite, dietary preferences, or difficulties with swallowing or chewing. This information is valuable for the healthcare team to assess the patient's nutritional status and make any necessary adjustments to assisting with special diets, if a patient has specific dietary restrictions or requires a modified diet, ensure that their meals align with these requirements. Familiarize yourself with the patient's dietary plan and work closely with the kitchen staff to ensure appropriate meals are provided. Providing nutritional support. In addition to assisting with feeding, CNAs may also be involved in providing nutritional support to patients. This may include encouraging fluid intake. Proper hydration is essential for maintaining overall health. As a CNA, you can encourage patients to drink an adequate amount of fluids throughout the day. Offer water or other suitable beverages regularly and ensure that the patient's water pitcher is always filled unless stated otherwise on the patient's care plan. Assisting with tube feedings. In some cases, patients may require tube feedings due to difficulties with swallowing or other medical conditions. If you are responsible for assisting with tube feedings, it is crucial to follow the healthcare team's instructions carefully. Pay close attention to the rate of administration, cleanliness of the feeding tube, and any signs of complication providing nutritional education. CNAs can play a role in educating patients and their families about proper nutrition. This may include providing information on healthy food choices, portion control, and the importance of a balanced diet. By empowering patients with knowledge, you can help them make informed decisions about their dietary habits. Monitoring and reporting. As a CNA, you are responsible for monitoring and reporting any changes in a patient's nutritional status. This includes documenting food intake, changes in appetite, weight fluctuations, and any concerns related to feeding or nutrition. Timely and accurate reporting ensures that the healthcare team can address any issues promptly and provide appropriate interventions. Safety considerations. When assisting with feeding and nutrition, it is crucial to prioritize patient safety. Here are some safety considerations to keep in mind. Ensure that the patient is in an upright position during meals to prevent choking or aspiration. Be mindful of any dietary restrictions or allergies the patient may have.
Use appropriate feeding techniques to prevent spills or accidents. Monitor the patient for any signs of distress or difficulty swallowing. By following these safety guidelines, you can help create a safe and comfortable environment for patients during mealtime. In conclusion, feeding and nutrition are vital aspects of patient care. By understanding the nutritional needs of patients, assisting with feeding, providing nutritional support, and monitoring and reporting any changes. CNAs can contribute to the overall well-being of individuals under their care. Remember to always prioritize patient safety and work closely with the healthcare team to ensure that patients receive appropriate nutrition. Please proceed to the next video. Mobility and transfers are essential skills for certified nursing assistants to ensure the safety and well-being of their patients. In this section, we will explore the various techniques and considerations involved in assisting patients with mobility and trans body mechanics. Proper body mechanics play a crucial role in preventing injuries to both the CNA and the patient during mobility exercises and transfers. CNA should always maintain a good posture keeping their back straight and using their leg muscles to lift and move patients. Here are some key principles of proper body mechanics. One, use your legs, not your back. When lifting or transferring a patient, bend your knees and use the strength of your leg muscles to lift, rather than relying on your back. This helps to prevent strain and injury. Two, maintain a wide base of support. Keep your feet shoulder width apart to provide a stable base of support. This helps to maintain balance and stability while performing transfers. Three, avoid twisting your body. Instead of twisting your body while moving a patient, pivot your feet to change direction. Twisting can strain your back and increase the risk of injury. Four, ask for assistance when needed. If a patient is too heavy or requires more than one person to safely transfer, don't hesitate to ask for help. It is better to seek assistance than to risk injury to yourself or the patient. Transfer techniques. There are several transfer techniques that CNAs can utilize to safely move patients from one surface to another. The choice of technique depends on the patient's condition, mobility level, and the available equipment. Here are some common transfer techniques. One. Assistive devices. Utilize assistive devices such as transfer belts, gate belts, and mechanical lifts to aid in transfers. These devices provide support and stability, reducing the risk of falls or injuries. Two, stand pivot transfer. This technique is suitable for patients who have some weight bearing capacity and can stand with assistance. The CNA stands facing the patient, places a transfer belt around the patient's waist, and provide support as the patient pivots to the desired surface. Three, two-person lift. For patients who are unable to bear weight or have limited mobility, a two-person lift may be necessary. CNAs should coordinate their movements and use proper body mechanics to lift and transfer the patient for slide board transfer. A slide board is a flat, smooth board that allows for easy sliding of patients from one surface to another. This technique is useful for patients who have difficulty standing or limited mobility. The CNA positions the slide board under the patient, assists in sliding the patient onto the board, and then slides them to the desired surface. Safety considerations. When assisting patients with mobility and transfers, CNAs must prioritize safety to prevent accidents and injuries here are some important safety considerations to keep in mind. One, assess the patient's mobility level. Before attempting any transfers, assess the patient's mobility level and determine the appropriate transfer technique. This helps to ensure the safety and comfort of the patient during the transfer. Two, clear the path. Remove any obstacles or hazards from the transfer path to prevent tripping or falling. Ensure that the surfaces are clear and free of clutter. Three, communicate with the patient. Always communicate with the patient throughout the transfer process. Explain what you are going to do, provide clear instructions, and ask for their cooperation. This helps to reduce anxiety and increase patient compliance. Four, use proper equipment. Utilize appropriate assistive devices and equipment to aid in transfers 
ensure that the equipment is in good working condition and properly adjusted for the patient's comfort and safety. Five, monitor for signs of distress. During transfers, closely monitor the patient for any signs of distress, such as shortness of breath, dizziness, or pain. If the patient exhibits any discomfort or distress, stop the transfer and immediately call for help. Documentation and reporting. Accurate documentation and reporting are essential aspects of a CNA's role in mobility and transfers. CNAs should document the details of each transfer, including the technique used, any assistive devices utilized, and the patient's response. This information helps to ensure continuity of care and provides valuable insights for the healthcare team in addition to documentation. CNAs should promptly report any incidents or concerns related to mobility and transfers to the appropriate healthcare professionals. This includes by mastering the skills and techniques related to mobility and transfers. CNAs can provide safe and effective care to their patients. Remember to prioritize proper body mechanics, utilize appropriate transfer techniques, and prioritize safety at all times. With practice and experience, CNAs can become proficient in assisting patients with mobility and transfers, contributing to their overall well-being and quality of life. Please proceed to the next video. Exercises are an essential part of a certified nursing assistant's role in providing care to patients. These exercises help maintain and improve joint flexibility, muscle strength, and overall mobility. As a CNA, you will often be responsible for assisting patients with performing RO exercises as prescribed by healthcare professionals. This section will provide an overview of range of motion exercises, their benefits, and the proper techniques for assisting patients with these exercises. Understanding range of motion exercises. Range of motion exercises involve moving a patient's joints through their full range of motion to maintain or improve joint flexibility and muscle strength. These exercises are particularly important for patients who have limited mobility due to illness, injury, or surgery. ROM or ROM exercises can be performed on various joints, including the shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, knees. The primary goals of range of motion exercises are to prevent joint stiffness, maintain muscle tone, improve circulation, and enhance overall mobility. By assisting patients with these exercises, CNAs can help prevent complications such as contractures, muscle atrophy, and range of motion exercises offer numerous benefits to patients, including 1. Improve joint flexibility. Regular ROM exercises help maintain and improve the flexibility of joints, preventing them from becoming stiff and immobile. 2. Increase muscle strength. By engaging in ROM exercises, patients can strengthen the muscles surrounding their joints, which can enhance their overall mobility and stability. 3. Enhance circulation. Performing warm exercises stimulates blood flow to the muscles and joints, promoting better circulation and oxygenation. Four, prevention of contractures. Contractures occur when muscles and tendons become permanently shortened due to immobility. ROM exercises help prevent contractures by keeping the joints moving through their full range of motion. Five, prevention of muscle atrophy. Lack of movement can lead to muscle wasting and atrophy. ROM exercises help maintain muscle tone and prevent muscle weakness. 6. Improved independence. By assisting patients with ROM exercises, CNAs can help them regain or maintain their independence in performing daily activities. Techniques for assisting with range of motion exercises. When assisting patients with range of motion exercises, it is crucial to follow proper techniques to ensure their safety and comfort. Here are some guidelines to keep in mind. 1. Communicate with the patient. Explain the purpose and benefits of ROM exercises to the patient. Obtain their consent and ensure they understand the movements you will be performing. 2. Prepare the environment. Ensure the patient is in a comfortable position, such as lying in bed or sitting in a chair. Make sure the room is well lit and free from any obstacles. 3. Warm up the muscles. 
before starting the exercises, gently warm up the muscles by applying warm packs or using a warm towel. This helps relax the muscles and prepares them for movement. Four, start with gentle movements. Begin with gentle passive movements to assess the patient's range of motion and tolerance. Gradually progress to active assisted movements where the patient actively participates in the exercise with your assistance. Five, support the limbs. When moving a patient's limbs, support the joint above and below to provide stability and prevent excessive strain on the joint. Six, use smooth and controlled movements. Perform the exercises in a slow, smooth, and controlled manner. Avoid jerky or forceful movements that may cause discomfort or injury. Seven, Observe for pain or discomfort. Continuously monitor the patient for any signs of pain or discomfort during the exercises. If the patient experiences pain, stop the exercise and inform the healthcare team. Eight, document and report. After completing the exercises, document the type of exercises performed, the patient's response, and any observations made during the session. Report any concerns or changes in the patient's condition to the appropriate healthcare professionals. Sample range of motion exercises. Please refer to your state's CNA candidate handbook for the exercises that are applicable during your CNA examination. Here are some examples of range of motion exercises for different joints. One, shoulder flexion and extension. Gently raise the patient's arm forward and backward, allowing the shoulder joint to move through its full range of motion. Two, elbow flexion and extension. Bend and straighten the patient's arm at the elbow, moving it through its full range of three. Wrist flexion and extension. Move the patient's hand up and down, allowing the wrist joint to flex and extend. Four, hip abduction and adduction. Move the patient's leg away from and towards the midline of the body, allowing the hip joint to move through its full range of motion. Five, knee flexion and extension. Bend and straighten the patient's leg at the knee, moving it through its full range of motion. Six, ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Move the patient's foot up and down, allowing the ankle joint to flex and extend. Remember, Always follow the healthcare professional's instructions and the patient's care plan when performing range of motion exercises. Regular practice and proper technique will help you provide effective assistance to patients and contribute to their overall well-being. Please proceed.